so up next is a, a, a talk on a uh, another more novel type of uh, hardware where it's uh, being used uh, compute in memory and on uh, using resistive RAM uh, technology. Uh, the speaker is Jan Morris Josep, and the title is Architecture Compiler Co Optimization of Computing in Memory Edge AI Accelerators. Again, showing uh, how the tooling uh, uh, sort of always needs to be taken into account uh, for, for these types of applications. Uh, Jan Jorf Moritz Josef um, uh, received his PhD from Otto von Goerike Universität Magdeburg, Germany in, in 2019. In 2020, he received the award for the best PhD thesis from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Information Technology uh, at the same university. And uh, he joined the Institute for Communication Technologies and Embedding System in Aachen University in June 2020 as a postdoctoral research fellow in the chair for software for systems on silicon. He's responsible for the compiler and architecture development for computing in memory based edge AI accelerators. Please. please. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Um, and uh, um, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to my talk on architecture compiler co optimization for uh, computing in memory edge AI accelerators. So um, neuromorphic computing essentially claims to offer some disruptive uh, efficiency improvements. I don't have to sell this to you because we've seen a lot of talks on this already, like 100x increased energy efficiency, 10x increased uh, improved performance. And these are like bold claims. And um, at least in my opinion, we now see that some chips already deliver on this. So just recently in this year, um, Stanford published their Neuram um, computing and memory chip, which um, claims to give uh, 1,320 teraops per watt, which I think is a quite uh, huge number and, and really impressive. So in terms of um, what is happening um, in, in the chip community, it's all very promising. And um, what we see is um, that this is not really usable for the community here at, at the moment. So um, within the project that we call Eureka, we try to build an SDK or a compiler for these Edge AI SIM chips and um, basically provide an, uh, an ecosystem to, to give you an integration of these Edge AI systems um, into the existing Edge AI software stacks and by that enabling a somewhat seamless and risk-free migration from the existing CMOS technology towards this um, computing and memory system once they are widely available. Um, in terms of the agenda, I'm going to give a short introduction um, on neuromorphic computing and computing in memory technology, again, just to get everybody onto the same chip here. Um, then um, I'm going to give an overview about neuromorphic accelerators in terms of system architecture advantages and challenges. And then we are coming to the gist of this talk about architecture co-optimization, uh, architecture compiler co-optimization. So I'm going to give an overview about our approach, um, how to, to do ML compilation for these um, systems, and then give a case study on what are key challenges that we see at the moment. Um, at the end, I would like to finish with our Eureka ecosystem, so the SDK that we have and the hardware development kit and show a very small and simple demo um, before concluding the talk. Okay, so um, regarding uh, machine learning, I don't have to motivate this. It's a super computation intensive and data incentive task and existing systems are somewhat limited from the so-called memory wall problem or the von Neumann bottleneck where you have to chip in data from main memory to the CPU. And neuromorphic computing or brain-inspired computing is a, well, a huge planter of different technologies that all try to target, um, uh, to tackle this kind of limitations with different approaches that we have seen today and um, of one of which I'm going to talk today. So in terms of neuromorphic computing, basically the, um, the promises are reduced power consumption, improved latency, and also online training in these systems. And there are different approaches um, which are in different stages from research to market. So we have seen a lot of event-based systems already in, this, um, in, in, uh, in the last talks in the last days. Uh, computing memory technology is getting ever more mature, but then SNNs or even like very fancy things like mimicking, mimicking plasticity are still far away from the industrial application. And so our mission here is to tackle computing and memory technology, which is, in my opinion, a few years before being market available um, at the market um, and make it usable to the HII community. So um, how does these architectures for these SIM cores look like? And in terms of, um, th there's no standard architecture yet. Um, there are some, some different uh, approaches from, from uh, different academic groups and also industrial um, 
well, work groups that uh, have proposed different kind of architectures. In general, it always looks like this. You have this, what we call an MVMU unit, which is here, matrix vector multiplication unit. So this is um, the, the actual unit that contains this computing memory technology, where you can do a matrix vector multiplication and analog. So um, this is um, what provides you the um, core arithmetic unit here. Then in addition, um, what you usually use um, are some general purpose execution units to, to map the remaining operations as well as a bus or NOC interconnected system where you then now scale out these cores to, to huge systems with multi, many hundred cores um, as proposed. And so to use this as an inference machine, it consists of two phases. So first you would write the weights or the neurons. This is basically executed once, right? You write your neural network to this design and then you can run inferences as, as often as you want. And essentially you have a weight stationary data flow on a multi-core system than in these kind of um, systems. And obviously it's reprogrammable, so you can map a different network there again by rerunning the setup phase. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a somewhat static once you have decided on the algorithm that you want to do. So let's go into neuromorphic edge AI accelerators, especially in terms of system architecture. So if you have now this um, individual core that I just showed in rather huge detail, so how can we do it uh, or how can we assign it into a larger system so that we get a general purpose AI accelerator? So you can again see the core here, um, which is basically uh, something um, arranged now in a unit we, does it work? Yeah, a unit we call a tile or you can do any other term for this, but essentially you're assigning multiple of these SIM cores towards an interconnect and then connecting it usually to some controller that controls your tile as well as some local memory. And um, yeah, you do this kind of hierarchical tiled approach because the um, SIM memories are physically limited in size, so you have to do some, some hierarchical design to, to approach this system. So then you can assign multiple of these cores to one tile and then multiple tiles towards the overall system, connecting some IOs like sendable memory to this, and then you finally have your system. And in terms of compiler, you have different ISAs depending on your abstraction level that you're targeting here. And one of the core objectives in these systems that is different to what compilation for conventional systems, as most of you use nowadays, is that there's a huge need to optimize the intercore and intertile communication. So it moves from, from a conventional compilation problem towards more data flow optimization problem now. And yeah, what are the advantages? I, we have all seen this like uh, reduced data movements, energy efficiencies improved and so on and so forth. I'm not going to reiterate all, on, all of this again, but in terms of challenges, um, I think it's still quite a long time towards uh, be market ready with this kind of technology because the SIM technology is still quite quite immature. And um, then also, if you want to map what most in academia do, S and N, so spiking neural networks to the SIM technology, I, I'm a little bit like approaching this more industry um, close uh, community, I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical because I feel that DNNs are much more common and SNNs are not well established. So, so basically, can you just use that? No, the short answer is you can't use that and that's quite unfortunate. You can't really leverage on the advantages. So what we try to provide is a solution which focuses mainly on this hardware uh, development kit, uh, mainly on the software development kit, I'm sorry, but also provides a hardware development kit so that um, early adopters can already take a look at this kind of technology. Okay, so let's go into, into our compilation flow that we are proposing. So essentially the question is, is what, what does this SDK do? Well, we take a TensorFlow or a PyTorch model, um, we run it through the intermediate representations, um, which are language abstractions that we implemented in MLIR, and then you get an executable at the end. So that's what your compiler does as usual, and then we can run it in system simulations to, to show this, but we can also execute it on in first uh, neuromorphic chips that are already available. And to go into more detail, so what, what does actually happen technically inside this? Um, so, um, yeah, as we want to map this to a neuromorphic chip, we start with our compiler front end. So we do some pre-processing on the TensorFlow models, um, doing quantization and pruning approaches. Then afterwards, grouping operations that have to belong to um, same units. Then we have a middle end, which is now doing a top to bottom approach to compilation. So in the middle end, we are taking a look at the system level. We partitioning the overall um, graph, then do global mapping and then scheduling on these tiles that you have seen. And then once we have decided for each tile what to do, then we are going to the middle end. So on the core level, we are doing partitioning, scheduling and polyhedral optimization of the, um, of the uh, application mapping. And then finally, in the back end, we do the memory allocation, the sequencing, and finally, the, the code generation for our approach. So I think that's a relatively standard way to do it, frankly spoken, but uh, the competing approaches don't uh, follow this in all cases. So we are doing a very strict top to bottom approach and hope that this is um, going to provide um, the best performance here. 
So in terms of the case study, today I'm going to talk a little bit more about scheduling. So in terms of scheduling, what, what does here actually happen? So it's basically scheduling of parallel execution. So you have your convolutional layer that we are taking a look here and you want to execute like um, input feature maps times kernels. So um, yeah, as usual, we um, translate this into a matrix vector multiplication. You have seen this multiple times and then we split it up into something we call ver vertical and horizontal groups. So VG and HGs here, which are representing also the vertical and horizontal uh, horizontal levels of parallelism that you would see in these crossbars of um, uh, computing and memory technology. And then um, we map this kind of operations towards the individual cores. So basically we take this chunk of operation here and map it to this um, rerun um, computer memory core. And by that again, you have a, a distributed um, system which now has to optimize the data flow. And then in addition, we share have a shared memory here to store intermediate results because we obviously have to communicate intermediate results between those cores and we have a controller that um, controls all this. Um, so how does that look? So the, well, that's just like easy going through the examples for you. So sequential execution would be very simple. Nobody would really want to do this, right? So you have one core, you run all your, uh, all your parts of your algorithms and the next core and so on. So nobody would want to do this. Um, but in terms of like parallelizing it, so you have two different optimization approaches here. You can either do it linearly, where you uh, linearly um, lay out all the executions on each core and then um, sequentially execute them over the uh, individual cores. And in a different approach, you could also do it cyclically, um, so where you can fill the gap here um, by doing some cyclic um, scheduling on the course. And so this is what we both have implemented in our tool flow. And then at the end, what, what happens in terms of pseudo instructions, so you have load and store instructions where you load and store data. You have matrix vector multiply um, instructions here, which are executing the um, computer memory cores. And then finally, you have wait and call signals to synchronize um, between your multi-core setup. So how does this look like? So we um, executed the conf, uh, 2D layers here from MobileNet and ResNet 18. Um, you see different sizes of the um, architectures at the bottom. So we are changing the number of cores in the system. And we are also changing the crossbar dimension, so the sizes of individual memories. And then the two important findings here are that we can actually achieve the optimal um, parallel um, execution pattern here by actually using 100% of the cores the whole time if um, the cores are small and the communication is large enough, right? So in other words, if um, your, your uh, cores are getting larger and you can compute more than um, your communication system um, is getting the bottleneck and you can't reach the, the optimum here. So what this shows is essentially the importance of, of data flow optimization now and the importance that um, we have to uh, make useful scheduling decisions to, to use the, um, the, the available communication resources the best. So we have a different view on this, again, averaging over a conf to do layers, a conf to, to d layers here of MobileNet and ResNet. And um, again, what you can see here is basically the same that I just told you. So we are doing, applying Amdahl's law here to find how uh, good is our speed up limit. And um, then you can see that we are staying within 99% of the maximum speed up that you can achieve. Again, if you have compute to communication resources balanced, but if it's um, not balanced, then you throttle your multi-pore system massively. So um, to put it in, in, in a more relevant conclusion here, um, what you can see is your computer memory technology, well, it promises you to, to give you like insane teraops per watt numbers, but essentially it doesn't really solve this problem that you have to move data. You still have to move data and um, having a useful compilation infrastructure that um, enables efficient movement of data is highly relevant in these systems. Okay, so let's uh, quickly wrap up the talk on um, what we try to provide here. So um, yeah, we have a SDK, it looks like this. So you can start with a pre-trained neural network and an architecture description. So this is your input parameters for your um, architecture compiler co-optimization. Then we run this through the um, compiler, which basically goes through the intermediate representation, does uh, SIM-specific quantization, um, data flow analysis, mapping, scheduling, as I just discussed, and finally generates the code. We've written this in MLIR, parts of it are still in Python, and then integrated this with TensorFlow. Then um, we have a um, cycle accurate system simulator. Um, so basically you can now simulate the systems that I just showed you. Um, so we are using system CTLM 2.0 compatible um, simulations here with an XC4 interconnect and using gem 5s uh, risk five core as a controller. So what is still work in progress is to have a fast BP for verification, but um, we'll provide that later within this process. And then finally, yeah, you get the KPIs, right? Latency, system power, and you can verify that your algorithm actually works. 
So this is our SDK, and um, yeah, if you're interested um, to use that, uh, please um, ask me, and we are happy to discuss that with you. In terms of the HDK, um, I also brought the, our board today. So this is our first um, computing and memory board that we um, developed. So um, you can also see it on the slides and uh, on the slide and larger. But essentially, this is your your SIM chip here at the middle. And then you have an FMC connector towards an FPGA. So basically, this is target. It's a super flexible crossbar design, so you can do a lot of different um, uh, experiments for this. This is more like experimenting in the lab kind of thing. Um, but anyways, you can do hardware prototyping with an FPGA. In addition, um, we are now building uh, something we call an IoT neurobot. Neuro so this is much smaller form factor, um, again, including a SIM chip, um, an ARM controller, and then different kind of um, sensors for video, for audio. Um, a gyroscope and um, so on and so forth. So here's the idea to have a smaller footprint integrated with the wireless um, gateway so that you can actually use this more within this community that we are talking about. Okay, and then I also brought a small demo. Can you play the video or can I do it manually? Yeah, so uh, as I wrote there, welcome to the 90s. It's just uh, letter recognition, so please don't kill me. <laughs> I know that's not fancy for you. Um, anyways, th these research chips are quite small at the moment, so we couldn't do anything larger on this kind of board, but it's targeting a different use case. Um, we just wanted to show that it's possible, it's working. So um, here we connected um, this system with a microcontroller and a GUI, which is just showing some smart smartwatch thing um, neatly copied from Apple. And then we can run uh, letter recognition on this uh, within a reasonable time. And here we are using the CIE Leti technology to do the matrix vector multiplications. Okay, so uh, ah, it, now it plays. Okay, perfect. Let's go to, to the conclusion. So what is our contribution for the Edge AI community? And, and what are we looking for? So essentially, our idea for this new Rika project is that um, you can take your AI applications and we provide a software development kit and a hardware development kit for these SIM systems so that you can actually leverage on the improved performance and the um, energy efficiency that SIM promises. Um, then in addition, we can offer with these kind of boards low-cost proof of concept if you're interested to show customers or also within your company internally that um, the SIM technology actually does work. And by that, we hope we can improve the time to market for the SIM technology by now already developing the software tool, uh, the software um, stack while um, the hardware is still in the process of being developed. And in terms of what do we offer, so we have a retargetable SDK I just showed you. And um, if you want to be an early adopter of, of this computing and memory technology, um, I hope that what we provide here would be of useful for you. And what are we looking for um, in this conference? So if you're interested in this technology, please um, get in touch. So we are looking for either application partners to show more interesting demos than just a letter recognition. Um, if you can give us feedback and insights or open for collaboration, that, that would be most appreciated. Thank you for your time and I'm open for any questions. Thank you.